Hi students, uh, so welcome back to class number 18 on uh, CMA and financial uh, management. We are in uh, uh, taking this group 2 subject for uh, our inter students. Okay, so we are in chapter number 1 decision making tools. There are uh, we have covered all the illustration and then we are we have moved to the additional problems given in your study material. There are uh, 44 additional problems out of which we have covered everything during our all the previous classes. Please watch the class in our order so that you can see you can uh, know all the problems and all the formulas that is discussed in the earlier class so that that will not discuss that will not be discussed as detail it was discussed in the previous class. So today we are uh, completing the chapter one with this class number 18. Okay, so please work out this has highest weightage so you can expect from 12 marks to 18 marks from this whole of the uh, cl class 18 till class 18 whatever we have covered you can uh, if you have gone through completely and practiced okay you can uh, give a shot up to 12 to 18 marks in the question paper there has been attempt where 18 marks has come from this uh, marginal costing whatever we have covered till now along with the theory portion uh, so I, I would suggest that you will you, you are guaranteed for 12 to 15 marks for sure if you have covered all this 18 classes. So if you are strong in this, I think all the subsequent chapter will be much easier for you because this is the fundamental. Okay, so you can surely score 30 to 35 from this cost and management accounting portion alone. Okay, so so give a good practice to all this problem so today in the this is the last class on this marginal costing then we will move to the subsequent chapter uh, maybe budgeting okay so let's move on to today's class so this is a very complicated problem but this is very practical so till now we have seen lot of problems on marginal costing but all the problems is like whatever is the production quantity those quantity has been sold this was like an assumption but practically in a company it will not happen like that 1 lakh quantity may be produced 90,000 may be sold or sometimes 1 lakh 10,000 may be sold how because there will be some opening stock of finished goods also and after the sales has happened during the closing there will be some closing stock also so practically we have not seen any problem till now but this problem is a real practical scenario which is which once you have become a qualified CMA or as a CMA inter if you are working in the finance department many people are working professional doing ICWA so they must be day to day day in and day out they must be analyzing this if they are working in the factory okay but if they are in accounts payable or accounts receivable or some corporate office maybe they have not seen something like this but uh, but maybe the uh, as a corporate finance they, their responsibility may also be valuation of inventory or something like that so friends uh, let me go inside this problem this is a very challenging problem there are areas where students has gone wrong uh, step marks as also they have not got so when this problem comes you have to select it because you have put all efforts to read the question number one in during the three hours time on your examination number two this is a marginal costing and i know my students are thorough with the marginal costing philosophy okay so with this i am taking forward uh, to this problem okay so and i would suggest just after seeing this video please work it out and i'm sure after one and a half months of time there is high chance you will forget this concept you can rework it because this is the real marginal costing problem this is very practical uh, okay so let me go let, let us dive into the problem your company has a production capacity of 2 lakh units per year so 2 lakh units is the production capacity of our factory which means all machines that is placed on the manufacturing is aligned to produce the overall output of 2 lakh units of the end product okay some machines may be with the capacity 2 lakh 10,000 2 lakh 20,000 some machines may be with the capacity only 2 lakh which means there will be a in between working progress inventory that will be created however overall overall the system can produce a maximum rated capacity of 2 lakh rated capacity means what 
it is a technically the machine has been certified for that but practically it may be lower or lower only it cannot be higher okay normal capacity utilization reconned at 90 percentage so what the company call it as though technical parameters or uh, the machine manufacturers has given uh, 2 lakh as the units capacity per year but practically when the company is working it can uh, produce a maximum capacity utilization of 90 percentage only they have taken all possible efforts okay maybe some more business process re-engineering may be required okay some value stream mapping value engineering may be required many consultants will come to improve the capacity utilization but they have put in all their efforts and they are terming it as a normally we are running the plan and we are calling it as normal capacity utilization is 90 percentage standard variable production cost is 11 per unit so variable production cost is given fixed cost or 360000 for the year that is also given variable selling cost is 3 rupees per unit fixed selling cost 2.7 lakhs per unit uh, per year i'm sorry the unit selling price is 20 rupees so selling price is given variable cost is given in the year just entered 30th june 2012 the production was 160000 units so the period for which we are going to work now the production was 160000 units and sales were 150000 units the closing inventory was 20,000. So what does this mean? The closing inventory was 20,000 after selling 150,000 units. After selling 150,000 units out of the production quantity of 160,000 units. So this shows there was because 160,000 was produced, 150,000 was sold. So you would have been left out with only 10,000. But you are left out with 20,000 which means there was some opening stock. How much? It is 10,000. So 10,000 of opening stock was there. Over and above that you did a production of 1,60,000 units. So your total quantity was 1,70,000 units. Out of that you sold 1,50,000 units. So which means you are left out with a closing stock of 20,000 units. So when production and sales is given, and closing stock is given you can calculate the opening stock if there is a mismatch there should there should be opening stock and when production and sales are given and you are given a uh, opening stock then you can find the closing stock also so this is a normal formula which is opening stock plus production minus closing stock is equal to the sales okay i have given the formula here uh, maybe you can note it down and you can use it uh, here and there and uh, you can calculate any one thing that is left out uh, in the data given in the question. All the other three data will be given. The actual variable production cost for the year was 35,000 higher than the standard. So if you are a finance professional working in the manufacturing uh, factory, you will very much be aware about this concept. So what is so? Variable production cost is given in the per unit level, but actually while speaking, what happens, some material, uh, the, uh, it, there will be some risk because of which instead of uh, it is coming in the normal truck, maybe they would have used some premium transportation methods for uh, bringing it so soon because uh, the our normal safety stock limit is exhausted. So at that time, we will be in a position to bring the uh, stocks as soon as possible from the supply because all other materials will be in the inventory and manufacture production is running and uh, only one or two material that is left out because of which the production may stop and labor will be idle that is a huge cost for that we can uh, expend the petty amount on bringing the uh, uh, material as soon as possible now material coming in the truck is a normal variable cost but because of your urgency you have made a premium you have did an airlift and you brought it uh, brought it for the uh, as soon as possible assume that your factory is in chennai and material is coming from uh, nashik or uh, long lasting if it if it is truck it may take uh, one and a half or two days but uh, in airlift you are getting on the same day but the cost is going to go up the 10000 transporter will become uh, 25000 transport in that case you have the, the variable cost actual variable cost is different from the standard one the standard will be it will happen but when some risks or economy uh, related changes happens 
it will not happen okay uh, always so we will do the variance analysis during during the month closing which we do while you are working in the finance department you will do the month end books closing at that time you will see what is the variable cost as per the pnl and what is the variable cost as per the standard cost or the marginal cost and there will be a gap between that it may be sometimes favorable it may be sometimes unfavorable okay but this time what P they have said is as per pnl if i see the variable cost is higher than the per unit variable cost multiplied by the quantity that we have produced it is higher so unfavorable variable cost variance was there so the actual variable cost was 35000 rupees higher so you so here they have given the variable production cost is 11 rupees per unit so 11 rupee multiplied by the production quantity is going to be the variable cost but while taking the pnl and analyzing it was 35000 higher so what is this 35000 yes you have to do when you are in the company when you are working in the company you have to do this and this is called as variance analysis you when you are thorough with this you can put this in your resume so you will get job opportunities uh, for the for doing the variance analysis uh, balance sheet versus balance sheet pnl versus pnl previous period versus current period by doing this you will get lot of opportunities okay browse in the google what is variance analysis and if you want uh, i can also throw some lights on the job job opportunities and uh, skills that is required for the finance professionals from the job point of view okay so this is what is the question okay now what we are uh, we need to find is the profit for the year till now the students will be very confident but profit for the year by absorption costing method and marginal costing method what is absorption costing method the total cost includes the variable cost and fixed cost what is marginal costing method the total cost will include only the variable cost so simple but it, answer is not so simple let us dive into absorption costing method now so what we are going to put we are going to put the total statement what is the sales what are the cost sales minus the cost we are going to find the profit this is what is the statement so absorption costing methodology we are going to use and we are going to make the statement and calculate the profit so sales it is given selling price is 20 rupees good and it is also said the sales quantity is 150000 units so volume means the quantity so 150000 units uh, so 20 rupees 150000 what is our revenue sales revenue is 30 lakh rupee there is no doubt in this next standard production variable cost it is given standard variable production is 11 rupee per unit 11 rupee but i have seen many students using the same sales quantity but the production quantity is should be taken here because how much quantity we have issued from stores we have issued for production so how much is being produced is that is what is the cost that has taken place so 1 lakh 60000 units of production has happened okay you should not take the sales uh, volume you have to take the production quantity so 11 rupee into 1 lakh 60000 rupees it is 17 lakh 60000 is the standard variable cost but when you analyze the pnl your pnl shows 35000 rupees you have overshooted okay from the budget you have overshooted 35000 rupees budgets will be as per the standard only as per the variable cost per unit only the budgets we make but actually due to some constraints maybe the trucks uh, they have uh, uh, stopped all the trucks for demand from the government or some because of some gst issues or uh, due to fuel price increase something may happen so because of some contingency you would have taken air lifted or bring uh, the materials in the premium mode or because or from instead of one supply you would have got the material from another supplier at a premium price so all this would have uh, happened and while analyzing the pnl you came across and you found the variable cost is 35000 higher than the budget now i am taking this 35000 also because that is a cost incurred we have to take that also in the cost while calculating the profit so 35000 rupees i have taken so uh, i have seen many students left out this 35000 okay next is the fixed cost because we are using the absorption cost methodology so we have to take fixed cost also into account so fixed production cost that is absorbed okay so i am just bifurcating the fixed cost is a fixed cost it is given in the question fixed production cost is 360000 rupees that is perfect that is not going to change at all but i just want to bifurcate this fixed cost 
into what is absorbed into the product cost and what is not absorbed inside the product cost. So if you are a costing team member in a large uh, company, you will surely be knowing this fact, but I will just explain. I think there will be a large volume of students who has not, uh, who, who may not be having ex uh, exposure to the costing department. So costing department is a sophisticated profile within this CMA uh, qualification and you are lucky if you are in a costing team. So uh, what the fixed production cost is there per unit uh, uh, 3 lakh 60 thousand on an overall per year basis it is given but how it will be absorbed to per unit level. The capacity we have discussed in one of our pre previous class uh, variable cost will be divided by the volume of production but Fixed cost will be divided by the capacity because fixed cost will not change for the year it is constant. So it should be divided by the capacity. So the denominator should not also be varying. Okay, the production quantity will be varying and accordingly the variable your cost per unit is also varying. That's why it is called as a variable cost. But fixed cost is going to remain the same. And if I am going to use the denominator as production quantity, if I produce 1 lakh unity, 1 lakh quantity, fixed cost per unit will be different. If I produce 2 lakh quantity, fixed cost per unit will be very different. We cannot make decision uh, if it is like that. So we have to put a constant quantity figure in the denominator and that is capacity. Capacity is constant. Capacity of the production line is going to be constant. But here there is a twist. 2 lakh is the capacity which is given in the question and 90% is the normal capacity utilization. So according to company, 2 lakh into 90 percentage, 1 lakh 80 thousand is the normal capacity. So we are going to divide this 3.6 lakhs which is the fixed cost divided by 1 lakh 80 thousand which is 90 percentage of 2 lakh and that is the fixed cost per unit. So if the company is using the absorption cost methodology and if the director of the company is asking you to uh, bring out the absorption cost statement, you have to do this kind of analysis. What the fixed cost that is absorbed, which is not lying absorbed. That also you have to analyze. So this is for your decision making purposes. I am keeping the fixed cost, which is not absorbed also. Okay. So from the PNL, you have to classify all those costs, which is fixed cost. And out of the fixed cost, you have to take whatever is the absorbed portion and whatever is the unabsorbed portion, you have to give some remarks or note in your presentation while delivering it to the director or the management. So uh, this is the fixed cost that is absorbed. Okay, so per unit and this is all the cost will be based on the production quantity. So production quantity of 160,000, I am using using it for here and 3,20,000 is the absorbed cost. So total fixed cost is 3,60,000. 3,20,000 is absorbed into the costing and remaining 40,000 is not absorbed. So overall 3,60,000 is also taken. So till now what we have done, we have calculated the sales revenue. We have calculated the standard variable cost and abnormal variance that has taken place. We have taken the fixed cost that is absorbed and also the fixed cost that is unabsorbed. Total all it together and the total production cost will come to 21,55,000. Okay, so with this all the cost is over? No, here there is one more thing, the stock. The delta change in the stock from the opening stock and closing stock has to be evaluated. Okay, only when this is valued, your overall cost till now we have we were seeing the uh, cost statements, absorption costing also we have seen what we used to do sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost will give you the profit as per absorption costing because nowhere it is given the closing stock and opening stock issues came nowhere. But here we have this opening stock and closing stock issue. So what is the opening stock? Opening stock we calculated it as 10,000. How did we calculate? Opening stock plus production minus closing stock is sales. Sales is given as 1,50,000 units. Production is given as 1,60,000 units. Closing stock is given as 20,000 units. Apply this formula, you can find opening stock as 10,000 units. So that's why here it is given as 10,000 units. But what is the value of this opening stock? What is the value of this opening stock? So opening stock of course standard variable cost of 11 rupees is sitting inside that that is number one and number two 
fixed that is variable cost fixed cost so this is the absorption costing methodology so the stock valuation or inventory valuation will be as per absorption costing mechanism so as per absorption costing mechanism fixed overheads or fixed production cost will also be absorbed that is the reason I, instead of putting 360000 as a whole i bifurcated the fixed cost into the absorbed and unabsorbed so now this absorbed whatever is the per unit that we have calculated the same thing will be added so variable cost per unit variable production cost per unit and uh, fixed production cost per unit is added together that is the value of the opening stock okay so multiplied by 10000 so opening stock value is 130000 next what is the closing stock closing stock is having all the is after the production has taken place so what is the production cost you have got a fresh cost which is calculated at the top which is 2155000 ,00 for how much production for 160000 ,00 units of production so this is the fresh cost why you want to refer something historical data and put this closing stock valuation or why should you take the opening stock valuation you have something fresh we have calculated just now so take that 21,55,000 which is the production cost for the 1,60,000 units and you can 21,55,000 divided by 1,60,000 units that is the per unit for the closing stock closing stock is 20,000 and 2,69,000 is the closing stock value so what is the cost that has gone in closing stock opening stock minus closing stock opening stock plus production minus closing stock will be the sales so when you come to the pnl perspective opening stock is less closing stock is higher closing stock minus opening stock is the cost that has gone into the production so to uh, 130000 minus 269000 negative of 139000 is also gone into stock this is what is the because opening stock is lesser more closing stock is left out so this should not add up to the production cost and cause the production cost to go up this is actually sitting in your inventory so this cost is taken out since opening stock is less closing stock is higher production this has to be taken out from the production cost 1,39,375 is taken out okay and now what we are left out sales variable cost variable selling cost 3 rupees that is taken and uh, fixed selling cost that is given as 2,70,000 per year that is also taken out. So here, here one more important information, variable selling cost. Selling cost is based on the sales quantity. So here I have taken the sales volume 1,50,000 is taken for the valuation of variable sales cost. Okay, 3 into 1,50,000, 4.5 lakhs and fixed cost, fixed selling cost it is given as 2.7 lakhs in the question itself so 30 lakh is the revenue minus 21.55 production cost okay and uh, you can add this stock valuation and then reduce the 4,50,000 which is the variable selling cost reduce the 2,70,000 you will land up at a profit of 2,64,375 so the overall absorption costing methodology has given you a profit of 2,64,375. Next, we will go to the marginal costing philosophy. This is little bit easy. So the same sales is not changing. 20 rupees and 1,50,000 is a sales quantity. 30 lakh is a sales revenue. So no change in the sales revenue from absorption costing to marginal costing. Next, standard production variable cost is 11 rupees. For 1,60,000 units of production, 17,60,000. So, no change in the standard production variable cost also. So, the variance of 35,000, yes, even in the marginal cost, we have to take all the variable cost. Okay, so I am taking all the variable cost, 35,000, our adverse variance. It is not favorable, it is an adverse variance. So, it is an increase in the cost. So, 35,000 is also added to here. So, there is no change till uh, here now what we are going to do we are going to do the stock adjustment stock adjustment has to be done because stock is also a variable for variable part because material stock is nothing but material and stock adjustment is also like a material cost and this has to be done to find the contribution so all the variable factors should be factored in 
and reduced from the sales to find the contribution and then overall fixed cost will be reduced to find the profit. So here, how are we going to value? Here, we are going to value the opening stock. Very simple on the basis of uh, it's a variable cost. So variable production cost, it is given as 11 rupees per unit. So opening stock, we are valuing at 11 rupees. But after opening stock has taken place, production activity has taken place. And after production, we are left out with the closing stock. And during production, okay, 11 rupee alone was not a variable cost. While analyzing the PNL, we saw adverse variance of 35,000 also sitting in the PNL, which is also a variable factor which is also variable in nature, it is sitting in the PNL. Okay, so overall variable cost is 1760 plus 35,000, which is 1795. So closing stock has to be valued at 1795 divided by 1,60,000. But opening stock to be valued at the standard variable cost, which is as per the question itself. So opening stock is valued at 11 rupees, while closing stock is valued at we are including the 35,000 effect also. It should be little higher than 11 rupees. So 17,95,000 divided by 1,60,000. That is the per unit. And what is the closing stock? 20,000 units are the closing stock. 10,000 units are the opening stock. So opening stock valuation is done. Closing stock valuation is done. Same way, opening stock minus closing stock. Whatever is the difference, that has to be reduced uh, with the uh, that, that, that will be in negative. It will reduce the production cost. Okay. So now the standard sales. So sales quantity is 1,50,000 and 3 rupees is the standard variable cost. The standard uh, variable sale selling cost. So that there is no change in that. So all the variable cost, variable selling cost we have brought in. Uh, stock adjustment we have got, brought in. Variable production cost we have brought in. Adverse variable uh, cost, uh, actual variance, actual variable production cost, whatever is the uh, adverse uh, change uh, that also we have brought in all the variable components we have brought in and we are reducing and finding the contribution as 8,69,000 and now we can go to reduce the fixed cost. It is given as 3,60,000 and 2,70,000. I am reducing the fixed cost to find the profit as 2,39,375. So there is a difference between the profit on these two. So the last question is explain the difference in the profit. So why there is a difference in the profit? You can see the sales is common between both the methodology. Variable cost is constant between both the methodology. Fixed cost is also constant. Then what is changing? Stock valuation is changing. Okay. The, the difference is because valuation of stock or valuation of inventory. In the absorption costing, inventory is valued at variable cost plus fixed cost. But in the marginal cost philosophy, it is valued only at the variable cost. Because of this alone, the profit itself is changing. Okay. So while going to your company, you have to see what all the possible policies and you have to follow the appropriate methodology for reporting your cost. Okay. So this is a little complicated problem. So as I say, there are... Uh, uh, student get deviated from the uh, procedure. I have put this into a table how much possible to my extent uh, here to make it easy for you. So that is the thing and uh, problem number 41 and 43 I saw it is the basics of marginal costing. So I'm not solving it. Take it as your homework and please uh, do it and if you have any doubt, please uh, drop in your comments. And 42 is the labor hour limiting factor. We have seen enough number of problem on limiting factors and labor hours limiting factors also we saw. So we are left out with one last problem, which is problem number 44. Before we are completing uh, uh, this chapter, we are left out with only problem number 44. We are going to that. The present output details of manufacturing department are as follows. Average output per week is 48,000 units for 160 employees. For 160 employees, saleable value of the output. Okay, so output per week is 48,000 units that is given and sales revenue that is coming is 1,50,000 that is given. Contribution made is also given 60,000. So contribution is 60,000, sales is 1,50,000. So sales minus contribution, we can find the variable cost also. So I have done that here. Okay. <coughs> 
the board of directors plan to introduce more mechanization into the department at a capital cost of 40000 so they are going to invest of 40000 rupees the effect of this will be reduce the number of employees to 160 so currently the 160 employees are there they want to reduce because of mechanization 160 to 120 but to increase the output per individual employees to 40 percentage by 40 percentage so output is increased by 40 percentage okay but employee count is reduced by installing a mechanization to provide the necessary incentive to achieve this so incentive will be provided to employees because they are going to work hard the employees also will be reduced their output will also be increased so they have to be motivated for that they are giving some incentive to the labor what a board board intends to offer one percentage increase on the piece of work price of 25 paise per article so 25 paise is the labor cost currently and they want to increase that by one percentage for every two percentage increase in the average individual output okay so individual output how much percentage it has gone up okay for every percent for every two percentage increase in the output per person one percentage higher uh, labor expense will be given to you so if you have increased your output by two percentage one percentage increase in your salary will happen okay so what is the current salary it is 25 paise so there is a little bit of confusion here guys so uh, so you have to read this problem very carefully so 25 paise is a current salary and if your output goes up by two percentage one percentage increase in your salary you will get and for every two percentage every one percentage salary increase you will get okay that's the crux uh, to uh, to sell this increased output now you have increased your productivity more output is there to sell the increased output it is necessary to decrease the selling price by four percentage okay calculate the extra weekly contribution resulting from the proposed change and evaluate the board's consideration the worth of the project so here what I am doing 150,000 sales is given a contribution is given sales minus contribution is going to be the variable cost. So selling price and this is all for 48,000 per week. This data is for 48,000. So 48K, 48K, 48K if you divide per unit also can be found. Now it is given 25 paise is the current labor cost. So 25 paise uh, uh, is the current labor cost and 48,000 is the unit that is produced. So 25 paise, 48,000 multiplied by 48,000, 12,000 is the labor component. So variable cost is 90,000. Uh, within the labor cost, there are many components. One of the components is direct labor. So the direct labor is 12,000. We have calculated here. 12,000 is nothing but 48,000 multiplied by 25 paise. Okay, so we have calculated because 25 paise is given 48,000. We already know that is the production quantity and multiplied. We found the direct labor. So out of 90,000, 12,000 is the direct labor. So remaining 78,000 is variable cost other than direct labor so now we have all the datas ready with us now we will proceed with the problem now uh, now they have given the mechanization and all let's see what it is now currently 48000 units is produced by 160 employees so 48000 divided by 160 you can find one employee is making 300 units currently now the company is going to make a mechanization and because of that individual employee is going to produce 40 percentage more so three that 300 into 40 percentage 120 units more they are going to produce so then how many they will produce 300 plus 120 420 units they will produce so if they produce 420 units output is increased by 40 percentage so they have said for every two percent <coughs> 2 percentage increase salary will go up by 1 percentage so here 40 percentage output has gone up so which means 20 percentage your salary will go up okay so the input that is coming from here is 20 percentage your direct labor will go up and next thing is you have found output per employee will increase to 420 but number of employee will go down um, number of employees reduced to 120 so per employee 420 number of employees 120 120 into 420 will be the total revised output after mechanism mechanization 
so if you install the mechanization your output output will be 50400 units initially before mechanization it was 48000 after mechanization it will be 50400 now they have said 4% selling price cut so sales how much it will be 3.125 is the per unit cut 4% and multiply the revised quantity 50400 sales revenue can be found next what is that direct labor direct labor what it is 25 paise is the current direct labor now 40 percentage output has increased so 20 percentage you have to increase the salary so 20 percentage increase from the 25 paise will become uh, 0 0.3 and production quantity is also 50400 so revised variable direct labor is found next other than direct labor there is no change other than direct labor it is 1.625 so 1.625 is per unit since it is variable we have to multiply it by volume 50400 variable cost is also so total variable cost is found and you can reduce it from the sales to find the contribution so how much is the total contribution it is 54180 so if you see the pre before mechanization we were having a contribution of 60000 okay it is also given in the question but after mechanization our contribution is only 54,180. Okay, so mechanization is not good at this moment. So you have to produce more quantity so that the mechanization will add some benefit. Or you have to you have to have much more accessories or something that is fitted to your end product so that your sales uh, selling price you have you should not cut. You are cutting four percentage selling price. These are all the reason why your contribution is going down. So uh, from this problem point of view, our contribution is going down because of mechanization. So see you guys. See you with the next chapter so soon. All the very best guys. Thank you.